Today I am working on finishing out the sides of the second floor of this building. Now we're doing a gambrel style roof. So you can tell that my, uh, my, my walls on the second floor are inset from my exterior walls. And then I have a steep uh, side roof that's coming down on the sides. Now this side roof, you know, normally when you design a gambrel roof system, you know, you would want to take maybe a 60 degree angle on your sides and a 30 degree angle on the top. Or if you, you know, basically whatever your side angle is, you would uh, divide it by two for the top. You can go as steep as you want to. If you do uh, a, a, a different setup of angles, it's not necessarily a structural thing. It's just the way that it's gonna look. It's gonna look a little more stocky. Now our barn is gonna look a little more stocky because <laughs> I'm not doing the math that way. Um, I've designed this entire project by myself and so I, I kind of come up with ideas as I go and I try and check you know everything that I'm doing against codes to make sure that the things that I'm doing are um, are within within the code. This is an agricultural building so um, you know there are certain I guess discounts that I get on it but I do want to make sure it's structurally sound. So on my sides, I actually have about a 75 degree angle. My sides are pretty steep and that was to maximize the amount of space we have here on the second floor. Now you don't have to do a gambrel roof this way. If you were to stick to the 60-30 uh, rule, you could definitely build it without having these interior walls and have you know, just an arch over the entire space. The problem that I found with doing that is that my walls would have come up very, uh, very low off of the roof and probably be about this high where I'm standing right now instead of the six and a half feet that I have on the sides. Now the way that our stairs comes up, if I had done a 30, uh, 60 degree angle on the sides, I would have been walking up into the side of the roof and that wouldn't have worked. I needed to have a decent landing pad to turn and walk into the, uh, the second floor of the space. So I could not do on this building uh, a 60 degree side and a 30 degree top. And with the 75 degree side at, at that steep of an angle, um, it just wouldn't be secure without having these interior walls. I went ahead and built my front wall and, um, and two side walls first. And then I added a piece of sheathing to the front wall. The, the sheathing is helping me uh, make sure that this building stays straight. Uh, that's real important. You wanna make sure that all your walls are staying plumb uh, throughout the construction process and that you know, everything is cornered and braced properly. I also have a couple braces on here that I used before I started putting the sheeting on. And I'll probably keep uh, this, uh, this bracing in place until I get further along with the sheeting along the, the sidewalls. Because I have a 75 degree angle coming off the side of the building, it almost shoots the water straight down to the footings, which I don't want. So I added a, a little kick out here. So I have an eave that kicks out about 12 inches from the building and that eave is at a 45 degree angle. So as water and moisture come down off the sides and the roof of the building, it'll shoot out the sides and that's to get the water away from the, the foundation of the building. Now this barn is going to have an additional 12 foot roof out the, the side of each side, um, but I'm not sure when I'm going to get to building that. So I'm building this as if those aren't there. That meant that I needed to have that 45 degree angle to help shoot the, the water and ice and everything else away from the footing of the building. To build those, I'm doing very basic uh, structure. I'm just taking a two by four and a, another cut two by four, placing them on top of each other and then I'm nailing them to the sides of my, uh, my, my side of the gable roof, gamble roof. I think that's gonna work out very well for me. I've started to put the sheathing on in place. Now, this is a very steep roof. I'm pretty high up. We're uh, getting up in the 20 foot range here. So I'm not gonna be climbing on a ladder to put these on. I'm going to be placing the pieces over the side and then nailing from the side. So as I come up the roof, I'm actually going to install my roofing material as I go. And that way, by the time I get up here, everything will be done including the external roofing material to the outside eventually we'll come back and put metal on this at which time i'll probably use a cherry picker or something because uh, i don't like heights personally I'm, I'm not a big fan i didn't like how thin 
uh, these boards were where I was attaching them to my uh, wall. I felt like there wasn't enough there to support them, especially, you know, in a, you know, if you have uplift or a big storm coming through. So I took some scrap sheeting material and the sheathing is structural. So uh, I took some of these scrap pieces, cut them up into small squares and attach them, you know, wherever I have the, uh, the sideboard coming up and attaching to my wall. And that offered a substantial amount of strength to these walls. Once I did that, these things didn't move. Now you'll notice back here, I've got some um, horizontal boards coming across and they're notched into my, my more vertical side roof here. These boards are to help me get out. I need to have my roof come out 12 inches from the front of the building and 12 inches from the back of the building. That gives me something to attach my sheathing to on the outside. Now, when it, all of this is built and everything's said and done, these will most likely be covered up with trim. So you're not gonna see these boards. Um, so if they don't go on perfectly straight, I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. In the area above the stairwell here, uh, and again, with, with eight foot ceilings and the, and the way this turns, I have to keep this area open. And this is an area that I'm still figuring out as I go with the framing, but I've gone ahead and I've started to install some horizontals here as well. So that will give me something to attach my, my sheathing to. I, it, when, it, when it comes over here, I'm also going to put in some diagonals. Um, this will be a double header, but I'm going to put in some diagonals to offer some support uh, about the 16 inch mark on each side and that should give me enough support for my roofing structure on top. I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna do the eave kick out down here, but that's something that I'll get to today, so I'm sure I'll figure something out for it. Um, I mean, the nice thing about this is you can, you can kind of, as you go, uh, figure out where something isn't too structurally sound and come up with an idea. And that's, that's pretty much, I mean, right now, this, these walls are, are pretty sturdy. They're not moving anywhere. Now you'll notice that I have a big gap on my exterior wall. Now what this big gap here is, is it's going to be framed in. Um, because of the stairwell, I decided that the best way to frame in this wall would be in sections. That way it gave me a little more, uh, a little easier control getting the boards up here and put into place through the wall. And then obviously it will have, you know, a single uh, top plate. But the, the reason why I have left this open is because the sheathing material is, is difficult to install when you're this high up. And so what I've decided to do is leave it open to get my sheathing material put in place, at least on that side, and then slide it into this side, and then I'll slide the next wall in place on top of that. Once I have um, these walls secure and the sheathing material put into place, I'll probably get the lumber that I need to finish this wall up here and then build a deck across a temporary deck across the top of this stairwell that I can work on to get up and finish doing this wall. So this is going to be a lot of work right here. There are a lot of things that I'm having to figure out, but it's it's slowly coming together. I think, you know, when you get up high like this and you're, and you're working from heights, the best thing to do is just, you know, stay slow, stay steady, you know, and get the, get the job done little pieces at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself and, and don't let yourself freak out about the, the heights too much. If you, if you start to feel a little unbalanced, you know, heavy winds often make me feel a little unbalanced when I'm, when I'm up on a structure like this. So then I, I kind of try and have to scale it back and find something else that I could do that uh, doesn't make me feel uneasy. Um, but for the most part, you know, we've been moving, you know, along fairly slowly with this. I've only had to have help with a couple of the sheathing boards on the exterior, um, getting those in place. And, but beyond that, I've been able to do this entire structure on my own. You'll notice I do have a two by four uh, running across the top here. Now this was put up here to help uh, keep the walls pulled in until I got the exterior pieces all put on and obviously this back wall built. So I'm, I'm using this as kind of a temporary brace. I've got several temporary braces up here um, that all serve some sort of purpose, but it seems to be working because everything's staying very tight and, and very plumb. And that's what I'm, that's what I need to see up here because the more plumb that I have this building, by the time I get to the roof, the easier it's going to be. And I want to spend as little time as possible up on that roof. I don't like heights. I want to just be able to go up there, knock the roof out and uh, hopefully not fall off as I do it. 
my top wall comes down and I have a hurricane tie or joist hanger, whatever you want to call those, um, at the bottom of each of these side roofs. I also have them on all of my uh, floor joists. What those are for are so that if, if there is a very big storm, a hurricane or um, a tornado or something comes through here, those help hold the roof in place. You don't want to have uplift. If a window breaks out or anything and you, you have uplift come into a building that has a lot of stagnant air, it could lift the roof right off of it. So um, that's what those are for. I have them on every single one. Um, I don't skip, I don't do anything like that because we live down in the south and hurricanes are something we have a lot of. So even if you're doing an agricultural building, you don't want to just do your, uh, your, your nails. You want to make sure that that thing is really secured down there. And nails are something I, you know, tend to go a little heavy on, but on an exterior wall like this, um, I, I, I really like to make sure that I've got a lot of nails securing that wall. And then by the time you get the sheathing on and everything else, this wall will be as solid as concrete. That's important to me. I like solid structures. I hate some of the flimsy stuff people build these days. You know, it might meet code, but if it blows over in a major storm, who cares? So again, this entire project, uh, the framing, the structure, the, the design is something that I've come up with on my own, I come up with as I've built. I have run a lot of the design ideas by engineers because I have easy access to architects and engineers. And um, just to make sure that what I'm doing is going to be structurally sound. So I'm not just coming out here and working blindly. I'm coming out here and I'm, I'm interacting with people, asking them about, you know, whether or not something that I'm doing is going to be uh, viable or not. One of the things that um, I had considered doing was using one by fours on my roofing and then just tacking um, metal roofing to that. But after some conversations with some architects and engineers, um, it was apparent that the sheathing is actually a much more solid uh, structure than using one by fours or even one by sixes. Now our house has one by sixes, but that is very old pine. It's, um, it's true cut, so it's an actual one by six that's underneath the metal of our roof. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with um, older wood versus newer wood, but that old tight grain wood is solid. I mean, it's hard to drive a nail into. Whereas some of the stuff that you get from Lowe's or your local building supply store is a much softer wood, it's faster grown. It just doesn't have the strength and durability that some of those older uh, woods have. And that's why you have uh, different building requirements today than you did you know, back then. Back then you didn't have to put a, a stud every 16 inches. So all of these are things that I'm taking into consideration as I build this building. I wanna make sure that I cover all of my bases and, and that the structure that I'm building is something that's going to last uh, for my kids and, and for a very long time. And so far this structure is, is coming along very nice. This is kind of my test structure. I've never built anything this big before. And so if I wanted to go bigger and build a utility barn, I wanted to have you know some experience some hands-on experience doing something this size first. When we built our house, I had framers and and uh, and a, at least a general contractor who I had consulted with throughout the entire project. So this is kind of my first, you know, hands-on project. Pretty much out here by myself, just just knocking away some, with some nails and and two by fours. You could build an entire structure out of two by fours, but um, it, you'd ha you have to follow certain requirements. Um, my rafters of my roof will be two by fours and I'll get in more into why I'm using two by fours for the rafters and, and what the requirements are of that. But when you look at things like the, the ceiling joists for the second floor, those are two by eights. And I put two by eights in because um, I'm, I'm basically utilizing this space as a second floor. When we're done with this, uh, these ceilings are gonna start right here and they're going to go up to about eight feet in the center and drop on each side so this is going to have a lot of height to it plenty of room um, it'll be like having a second floor of this building it's not just going to be attic space we have stairs coming up to it so i went with the two by eights because they were a lot more sturdy and um, you know you do feel some movement with two by eights you know you could double them up you could go to a two by ten but i think once we really get all the sheathing on the the roof and the exterior, um, you're not gonna notice 
any movement at all. I mean, the floor is going to feel a lot more solid uh, once I get through all of those steps, and that's that's important as well. So, if you build something like this, make sure that you're um, you're reading up on what the code requirements are. And, and again, if you, if you wanted to have uh, interior walls on your first floor every you know eight feet or whatever, then you could probably build a structure like this out of two by fours alone. But I'm not doing that. I have a wide open space down below here that's 16 feet wide, and so I needed to have uh, something a, a, that was substantially stronger underneath the floor of this building. Okay, so I got a little further today. I got this uh, back wall up and uh, the first set of sheeting on there. I got the sheathing across the front, except for, you know, about the same height. Uh, and I've started on this side here. Over on this side, I already have some sheathing on my, um, on my eave that pops out. I'm still building the eave over here. And then I'll apply sheathing. And then I'll, as I build the sheathing up on the sides, I'm actually going to put the roofing material on so that I spend as little time on the ladder as possible. Um, over here, I um, ended up putting a couple boards across the, the studs there and then nailing my eave pieces onto those boards. Uh, this feels pretty solid, so I, I, think, it's, <laughs> I think that'll work just fine. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like it's starting to look like something. Um, now the next uh, grouping of sheathing that I do will actually start going into the the uh, the top of the roof. It'll start going into the gable part of the roof, and so that will be a little more exciting. You'll start to really kind of see the building take shape at that point in time. What I'll probably do is get all the sides done and the sheathing all the way up, and the, and the side roofs done and then I'll work on the top roof. And that way I have the ability of reaching over the edge and, and easily moving things around. And then as I build out the top roof, um, that'll get a little more interesting. I don't like heights, so I, <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna do the roof yet, but we'll, we'll get that taken care of and uh, I think it'll all work out really well. It's, it's, so far it's going a lot better than I anticipated.